welcome to the review of the Von House Polisher Sander Amazon Prime Special. So straight out of the box we get a number of polishing pads. Um, I'm not a detailer so um, bear with me but we've got different um, different sponges and like a core sponge there and there should be some sort of like polishing mop over the port but can't seem to see that there anyway so I think they've opened this up to see what the uh, fitting is it's a velcro pad yeah it's velcro so there we go they just stick on like that pretty well actually not exactly easy to get off so the pads the actual unit comes in this carry box which is good let's get that out of the way put the pads over here so yeah this is the carry box instructions so something about plastic bag being dangerous um, yeah 1200 watts polisher the tools for putting it together with a handle and oh, there we go the kind of lambs wool polishing pad with another velcro attachment I'm guessing that this goes over there and then you tighten it up with these strings that's it and <clears throat> not to be used on paintwork obviously but a sanding discs disc sorry p800 um, very fine and then the actual unit I didn't know how much these things weigh um, they're five kilos so a little bit of weight behind it uh, with a handle attached that's going to help things let's just have a look at this uh, always put these things on the wrong way around normally and then I get told off <sighs> something like that anyway I'll fix that on in a minute uh, when polishing and detailing vehicle surfaces do not exceed speed setting 2 failure to adhere to this warning may result in damage to your vehicle so yeah <clears throat> you're probably looking at um, burning the paintwork let's have a look so it's got six crikey so it goes up to six they say don't exceed two mm. I think it starts I can't remember the revs it starts off at now can't remember there's a guy on YouTube that's used one of these for detailing um, I've looked on reviews for this and I can't see any other on um, YouTube uh, I don't know why that is I don't think this is a new uh, polisher out I think these have been out for some time I'm not sure that does I think that might lock it in place when you're tightening it onto the uh, bulb there's the motor in there I guess but yeah construction is pretty good obviously plastic, metal on the end um, but yeah it does feel quite sturdy but definitely it's going to need that handle installed so we'll do that and then we get on and um, we're going to do a, um, a bonnet car well van bonnet just to see how that goes I just noticed in here it does come with spare brushes um, these are quite handy because these things do wear out if you are using this probably professionally I don't know if it is a professional one probably use something else but the brushes can wear out and um, they do supply them uh, but to be honest I've never had the need to replace brushes before anyway let's get this put together and then go outside and then do a test on a car bonnet we'll be using G3 compound and the good old bad boy teacup all right I just thought I'd quickly show you uh, how we put the uh, handle on these things so obviously this one aside do that up this came with the kit but this side I was thinking oh that's great how the hell on earth do you tighten that up but all good stuff the allen key goes through there and then you can just tighten it up right so I'll see you outside
Right, so here we go. We are outside and we are ready to get going on this mean machine. So, as you can see, paintwork's not too bad on the bonnet of this uh, Renault traffic. So, this is a 2006 fan, so it's been on a bit, but um, it has been cut before and polished better by hand. No one's really happy with the results. So this is why I got the run house polisher. Um, I decided to get one of those instead of one of those sort of house mopping things. Um, because seem to be a lot better. So yeah, gave it a little bit of wash to uh, decontaminate. No clay bar on this. I'm not a detailer, so you, you know, stop the comments, but I probably did anything wrong, I'm not sure. So yeah, a bit of a wash to be in with, got all the rubbish off. It wasn't too dirty this fan, so just uh, yeah, go to find it a good old clean. Uh, got the bits and pieces off, and then we give a little bit of a dry after this. Um, so yeah, on this uh, detailing machine, uh, I noticed that it got six seconds, but only one and two are used for the polishing mode, so that's something to bear in mind before all your paint work. Um, I was a bit put off by these machines from what I've seen on YouTube and people warning you um, about not um, destroying your paint or anything, but to be honest, it's, you know, this one's worth it. I think it's 100 watt one. So it's, you know, it's got a slow start, it's, unless you put it on the maximum, so it's not going to do too much damage. So, yeah, just rinsed off all the uh, suds there. And um, I've got a couple of cutting compounds, the G3, which is really good, and also the old T-cut. But I think in this one I just used the G3. Um, there's a pad going on. So the, there's a button at the top there, you press that and it locks it in place, you can screw it on quite hard. The Velcro grip is really secure, there's no movement in the pad whatsoever. And obviously when you change the pad you can just pull the um, pad off the Velcro. I did a stupid thing where I undid the thing and then um, pulled the pad off the Velcro and then put a new one on, then put the thing back on the machine which was just ludicrous. But you get two of those so you can quickly swap between the two. So this is going on a number one setting for the initial kind of cut, I think you call it. So this has got the G3 compound on it. Uh, one thing, when I was mucking around with it, I did spray a little bit uh, on the windscreen and stuff, so it's probably me trying to um, show you the speed and uh, yeah, stuff is flicking everywhere. <laughs> but all good stuff, all good stuff. I would say if you do get any of the, the kind of polish or cutting compound on the black bumper and stuff just get just wash it off soon after otherwise it, I think it does stain um, and I've treated all the bumpers and that I heat treated them to get the plastic back to black there's another video on that uh, so yeah I'll leave that actually at the end of um, this one so you can uh, have a look at that but it's just using a heat gun to uh, get the black back on the bumpers it's all uh, manky kind of light grey whitish colour so there's the compound a bit of a got to get used to this I kind of like um, what you want to do is put it on and then just sort of spread it across and then do the polishing bit or the cutting bit so it's a bit of a, a bit of a wild horse it tries to sort of get away from you a little bit but um it's kind of got some sort of clutch i think because it you can't um put it this way you can stop it fairly easily if you put quite a lot of pressure on which is quite a nice feature so that should stop you getting into too much trouble with your paintwork so um yeah i'm gonna go all over half of the bonnet uh, I sprayed some water on this, I think you should use it with G3 stuff. Uh, just gives it a little bit of lubrication, which uh, seems to work pretty well here. So yeah, we're kind of like having a go on it. It's going pretty well actually. Um, the machine's not that noisy. Uh, it's pretty easy to handle. It's 5 kilos, but it's sort of fairly easy to handle really. It's well balanced. Um, so you know, as you can see, I'm just like going over that bonnet. When I did it by hand, it took forever. So. This is a lot better, and like I say, I was going to go for one of those Halford kind of mop things with two handles either side, but I didn't sort of read that too many good reviews on that, so I thought I'd get one of these. This is off Amazon, I'll leave a link to Amazon for this particular one uh, in the description of the video. So, a bit more lube going on. Just making sure I get all the bits. If anyone does watch this, he's in speed time, and tell me where I went wrong, because probably every part of this video is wrong, so, yeah, um, it's a guide, but this is a review of the machine, so, yeah, so, there we go, um, actually, I did watch one guy using this machine, I think it's a Savage Garage, 
that's the only other YouTube um, that, uh, kind of not review but video that I've seen someone using it and I kind of followed his way so um yeah anyway that's the cutting compound gone on just giving that a quick rub down and uh, you can see the paint works coming up so it will come up quite nice in a minute so yeah I, I think um, these machines are definitely worth a go I did the whole van by hand and it was murder and I've got like finger foil marks inside in bright sunlight uh, which I need to, that's the next thing I need to do. I'll well, have to have a session in my bag and uh, go with the whole thing. So, uh, yeah. Just a little bit of a. There you go, you can see it coming up. This is in the shade. Um, I think you should, the, the advice is to do this in shade, not to do it in bright sunlight. Uh, I think I've done it years ago in bright sunlight and really get it as a horrible result. So, um, yeah. So this is, this is going fairly well, actually. Uh, well, the machine arrived, I thought it was a bit too large and bulky and would be a pain to use, but no, I don't think it is at all. Um, I just need to do that other side now to bonnet. One thing I will say, at the end, when I went to pack the machine up, the way that the box is made, black like plastic box, you can't get the machine back in without taking the handle <laughs> off the top, which is a little bit annoying. Um, but yeah, it's just one of those things, I guess. So, uh, to think about that. We just store the pads somewhere as well. The pads come in the box which you saw at the beginning of the video so um, I'll put those back in there but yeah, please um some more they won't get contaminated. They won't be scratching up anything. Just a bit more lube on the right hand side. I think on a car this would be very quick to do. We have to put quite a lot of the, the, the kind of um, polish or the cutting compound on. It's um, very quick. The results are very quick indeed. You're never going to get that finished by hand. No way. So yeah, we're just working around the black, the black kind of plastic. Uh, like I said earlier, make sure you, once you finish it, you clear off the bits of over spray from the polish cutting compound. Uh, I once bought a Prius that was kind of it had this treatment and it was kind of covered in the stuff everywhere. Um, Kind of where they miss cleaning it off, um, so it's, it's just polish spray everywhere. So, anyway, could be worth putting it over your windscreen sheet or something to do this, and over the like anything like I say, back plastic just to keep the stuff off. So, that's the right hand side done, slightly hazy. I think the G3 is definitely better than T cut, T cut's kind of not very. It was what everyone used to use in the 80s before detailing came out and people did things a lot more properly with their cars. But now there's so many different things available, teacups kind of being shoved to the corner, although um, people still do get good results with it. Uh, it's cheap, you know, you get like a big bottler for £5 or you can spend 20 quid on a same size bottle of like a more expensive um, compound. But I think this G3 stuff's really good better results. So here we go, we're just getting the excess off the paintwork now and you can see that's coming up quite nicely, uh, nice reflections in, in the bonnet. These are all like microfiber cloths, so good, good to use. And then really the next point to do is the uh, polishing stage. Now the polishing stage, the polish that I actually use is uh, Alfred's stuff. Um, I can't remember if it's a resin polish or not. I was going to use the Auto Glim stuff, but uh, I haven't got any of the resin polish. I've used that before. That's pretty good, and that's quite well recommended to use. So um, yeah, but um, I am using the Alfred stuff. I noticed the almost stone chips are like showing up like badly. Um, I'm not sure if any touch-up paint was used on this and it's kind of like pulled it off. don't think it would do that, I just think it's the whites come up really shiny and it's just showing up black paint chips on the bonnet. So I think, is this the state, is this the point where I'm being stupid or not, I can't remember. No, because the actual buffing polish pad, actually I think it is, hang on, this is me trying not to pop off the, uh, the pad and drop it on the floor. Uh, 
thing, yeah. Way. So they they got the locking mechanism, as I said earlier, you push it in and you can rotate the pad off. And then I think this is where I'm working out what pad to use next. And I just I do go for the actual polishing um the lamb's wool pad. This is where I put on the wrong one. See, don't know why I did that because this Velcro pulled it off, but I didn't totally kind of forgot about that process. So that's uh, a lesson learned. That's the polish that I was using, Halfwood's car polish. It is pretty in um Witch Guide. Is it Witch Guide? No, it's Auto Express. They highly recommend this stuff. It comes in quite high in the pecking order of polishes. This is where I go. Yeah, I didn't use the Lambs Wall one straight away. I gave this a go. So um pop the polish on and then this is the better way of doing it and then rub it in like that and then switch the machine on so you get good coverage and the product goes further not just getting absorbed into the sponge detailing like a pro maybe not up and down left and right up and down left and right in circles but I get all over the place but you can see there it's it's, it is really doing that, that job of uh, getting the uh, bonnet nice and shiny. So I will be doing the complete van um, at some stage, which probably wouldn't take too long. I reckon a couple of hours I should get it done, maybe less than that. Things take longer when you're filming, so uh, yeah, this is the bad boy. So we go lamb's wool, which is a mean pad for the polishing. I think I was thinking here that you put the polish on and then you buff it off the lamb's wool, but I think you put the polish on the lamb. Well, I was getting a better result with the polish and on the lamb's wool and then the microfiber just to buff buff it a little bit, get the excess off. Here we go. So I think I would recommend this machine. I haven't used any others. Uh, I think they're probably, a lot of them are much of muchness. The slow start's pretty good to save you getting into too much trouble. Uh, it's pretty easy to kind of put the pads on. The pads are good quality. Uh, you get a nice long cable you can chuck over your shoulder. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's good. So here we go. Polish on the lamb's wool. Spread it and then switch the beast on. Most of all of this, it was on setting number one. There was a little bit of setting number two, but things got a little bit too exciting with it. So um, we were on one most of the time. Or oh, there we go, we're on a bit of two action. And to think people used to polish cars with two rags by hand, hours, fingers buckled, hurting, blisters, and now these beastly machines are available. Getting some more stuff on there. I think what I will do is get some, either some more of that health and polish or the auto glim resin polish. I might go auto glim. Well, actually, I might have a look at the review, the uh, Auto Express. Um, it's not a review, is it a review? They find the top 10 best polishes. polishes. So I might have a look and um, see what the latest is and buy either the Glim or the Halfords. I think the Halfords, yeah, it's just £3.99 bottles. But... Anyway, go back to this video. There we go. So we kind of like left and right motions, getting a nice coverage and that was it so we've got the excess still on the uh, bonnet there we just need to get that off with a um, cloth another plug for the house of the polish there's my rag here we go now look at this beauty that has come up really good pretty chuffed with that wouldn't have got that finish by hand no way if you've got any questions on this uh, fire them away to me I will answer 
uh, what else? I'd, like I said earlier in the video, for those that are still watching this, um, don't forget to click on the link in the description and that will link you to Amazon so you can take a look at this for yourself and uh, buy one of these bad boys. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Take care.